Hey everyone, it's David with Streaming Relativity, home of the Astro DNA Observatory. So today I want to do a quick video. I'd like to just uh, share an image of the Thor's Helmet Nebula that I took with my AstroTech 115 EDT telescope. Now, Thor's Helmet Nebula is also known as NGC 2359, and it's a large and a relatively bright emission nebula located in the constellation of Canis Major. Now, the nebula gets its name from its distinctive shape, which resembles a helmet, uh, or the winged helmet, I should say, of the uh, uh, Norse god Thor. And uh, it's about 15,000 light years away from Earth, and it's roughly 30 light years in, di you know, in diameter. That's if, uh, you know, that's all in, including the bright area, as well as some of the dark nebula that surrounds uh, that, that, that illuminated uh, region. Now, finding it in the night sky is relatively easy because Canis Major is in the southern sky. It's below the celestial equator, but it contains one of the brightest stars in the night sky. That's Sirius. And that's also known as the Dog Star. And together with the other stars in that asterism, which kind of shape like, uh, you know, uh, forms the shape of a dog, um, you should be able to um, get, a, get a sense of where, where, uh, where this nebula is located. Now, um, NGC 2359 is about 30 minutes east in RA and about 4 degrees north in declination from Sirius. So uh, if you can face south, um, spot Sirius, and then to just look uh, you know, a, a, a bit up and to the left, and that's the area in which you'll need to point your telescope in order to find NGC 2359. This is not a naked eye object, nor is it something that you'll be able to uh, really observe with uh, even, even high-powered binoculars. You will need a telescope, and um, it's, very, uh, it's somewhat faint, and you're going to need uh, narrowband um, filters as well. So what's the best time of year to image this? If you live in the north like I do, uh, this is absolutely a winter target. If you live in the, if you, if you live in the southern hemisphere, uh, 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 it's a summer target. So, you know, you're talking about the months of November through March uh, that are reasonable observing or imaging windows uh, for uh, NGC 2359. Uh, so I shot this image late in the winter season. I shot it in, in March, uh, March 13th through the 15th. And um, that means that uh, I could begin shooting it around 8.15, let's call it, uh, p.m. That's about the time that it crosses the meridian. And, uh, and you can run uh, your session until about midnight, 12.30. Again, I'm in uh, New York, latitude 41 degrees. So around 12.30 a.m. is the cutoff before this thing kind of descends and sets into the west. Now, on those evenings, uh, the 13th through the 15th, uh, you know, I had a waxing crescent moon, 14% illumination, which was absolutely perfect, no concern for my imaging. But I will point out that I did have sporadic clouds throughout the session that cost me some sobs. And I would say that the overall quality of my frames was at least as you measure it by, let's say, uh, HFR or FWHM values, I would say that the quality was not the greatest. I had some seeing concerns. However, um, I was able to, 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 to get a decent image here, I think. And in terms of the equipment that I used, I, I mean, I, this is part of a, uh, um, an extensive uh, trial of the AstroTech 115 EDT refractor telescope. This is a triplet design. Um, I love this telescope. I think it's a wonderful value uh, in the in the lower mid focal range. It has a, fo a native focal ratio of f7, but you're going to probably use it with the 0.8 times reducer field flattener, and that's going to give you an effective focal length of about 644 millimeters. And um, that's about. I wouldn't go any wider in terms of, with respect to this image uh, of Thor's helmet nebula. I wouldn't go any wider field than that. In fact, if anything, I would probably go longer. Maybe even consider knocking off the reducer uh, just to you know just to see if we can't get a little bit closer in on this target. Um, uh, you know, I pair my AstroTech 115 EDT with, in essence, a ZWO electronic. 
accessory train. And so that includes the electronic autofocuser, it includes the um, two inch electronic filter, uh, filter wheels. And I use an ASI 2600mm Pro camera, uh, which is a, I think is an awesome astro camera. Uh, it's based on Sony's IMX571. Uh, 26 megapixel APS-C format sensor. And this combination of the telescope and this camera, you're able to achieve a, a, a really a nearly ideal image scale uh, for typical seeing conditions, at least in my neck of the woods. And uh, I, you know, I shot, obviously this is a narrow band target. Specifically, I shot hydrogen alpha and O3. And I found that the O3 signal appeared to be the stronger of the two, um, which happens from time to time on different types of images. And so I was able to salvage 35 of my hydrogen alpha subs from these uh, multiple sessions that I uh, that I imaged, and each of those subs was uh, 120 second exposure using a gain of 100 and an offset of 50. I find that to be the best narrow band setting in my again in in my circumstances um, using this camera, and uh, that gave me about 70 minutes of hydrogen alpha, and uh, that's what the stack represents. But I also leveraged about 60 uh, O3 subs, and each of those also being 120 seconds of exposure with a gain of 100 offset of 50. And that gave me two hour, a two hour stack of O3, which I do believe was a stronger uh, signal. And given you know the time limitations that I had, given the you know the, the shooting window, meaning late March, you know I didn't I didn't even bother to try and grab uh, S two. You know at least I did get a couple of frames, and I wasn't I wasn't seeing data that was going to be meaningful uh, uh, for the for the level of image that I was trying to go for at this stage. And so I, didn't, I also didn't bother with any broadband channel. So my total integration for the image is three hours and 10 minutes, predominantly um, O3. And you know what? I think that's enough data to create a really cool uh, astrophotograph of uh, Thor's helmet nebula. And um, so what exactly is this NGC 2359? What are we imaging when we shoot it? And, uh, of course, other than Thor's helmet, um, NGC 2359 is an emission nebula. And as such, it's primarily illuminated by some intense radiation, some local source of intense radiation. And in the case of Thor's helmet, the radiation is coming from a central star, which we call WR7, where the WR is a special de a designation for catal uh, for cataloging uh, excuse me for cataloging Wolf Riot stars. Now, a Wolf Riot star is a really big, really hot, really bright star, and they're much more massive than the sun, and they shine thousands to perhaps millions of times brighter. Now, WR seven is 13 times the mass of our sun and 230,000 times brighter than our sun. Now, that's actually small for a wolf Riot star, but it's still massive compared to our own, and it is burning through its fuel very quickly, which is typical of these very large stars, massive stars. And as it does, it's generating these incredibly strong winds that are blowing off of its surface and radiating a lot of its stellar material far away from the star at speeds of millions of kilometers per hour. And of course, that radiation excites and ionizes the molecular do dust around it and it forms this kind of ring. And we recognize that as NGC 2359 or Thor's helmet. So you know, this is an amazing image. It's a really, it, it, you know, these Wolf Riot stars are rare. Um, and this is a beautiful example of their power. And so I chose, um, just in terms of briefly, in terms of processing, I chose an HOO palette, which means that I chose my red to be fueled by my hydrogen alpha signal. And I chose my 
um, my uh, both my blue and my green, my green and my blue signals to be powered by my O3 signal. And using a variety of techniques in PixInsight, you can use pixel math, you can use other combination techniques. You're able to composite an RGB image. And the original outcome for me was a touch too much red uh, for my taste, uh, although I've, I've seen this object represented uh, with this type of red um, molecular um, uh, uh, cloud structure and I think it you know I have no problem with it but for me I, I opted to dial back the red and emphasize more of the blue signal and uh, you of course can do whatever you feel is best to get an image that tells the story that you want to tell and you know what um, I love this image I you know I, I know it's not uh, I, I didn't have the best data for it but you know it makes a wonderful entry into my astrophotography journal and uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, let me know what you think in terms of uh, the color palette. If you prefer more red in these types of photos, you know, let me know in the bottom uh, or what your experience has been with this target. And, you know, while you're down there, go ahead, please subscribe. Uh, I would certainly appreciate the support on the channel. And uh, I think we've got a great community here and I've got many more videos to come like this. And with that, I'm wishing everybody clear skies and I will see you on the next video.